Hello beautiful people. I hope you guys are excited as I am to be speaking to you. I'm really glad you guys are listening today. So today we're going to be talking about something really exciting. Uh, I have to say guys, today fortunately it's not a fairy tale. It's uh, a real life story uh, which is really encouraging for me because you know I, I met someone that I wouldn't, okay I went somewhere where I wouldn't have gone and then I realized it was because I had to meet someone there. And normally, even if I'd gone there, I wouldn't have spoken to people. But this time around, I just spoke to someone and I realized that was the reason why I'd gone there in the first place. And it was to get this, you know, confirmation, this reinforcement of the fact that, you know what? God loves people. God is after his people. He never abandons his people. He never lets go of his people. He never gives up on them, just like we're talking about in the fairy tale last time. But this time, it's a real life story, and it's a real person. Um, so uh, I, I, I met this girl, and she was just telling me about her, her life story. She says she was not one of those people, you know, when you're in the church, you love God, you love the church, you love serving, you're always there, you don't mind being there, you don't mind being teased about it. And she was there. Uh, and she, she says, uh, slowly, at a certain point, she began to feel like, you know, this sadness that just came in her life because of circumstances around her. And she says, while she was there, she tried to talk to people, she tried to reach out to other people. But, you know, sometimes the times when you're in a space where whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that you're trying to explain, the people that are around you don't get it. And as much as they want to help sometimes they don't really know how and she says she felt let down she felt let down by the church she felt let down by her family she felt um, let down most of all in fact betrayed by God because you know she you know when, when the, the times when you go to people you try to share your problems and then they don't really they can't really help you and all they can do is just to tell you to get it all together and continue just keep at it keep serving keep doing everything just keep at it just get it together and let's just go forward um but you haven't dealt with the root you don't haven't dealt with what's going on so she says she felt like this for a long time until she finally exploded she said to leave church she said to leave and, and she decided that even god had betrayed her because while she was there trying to you know press on and be strong she could see other people sometimes you hear testimonies you hear people saying stuff and then you realize also oh, god is actually doing stuff for other people but not for me so she says that sadness just blew up at some point and then she says she decided to leave church she felt god betrayed her and she left uh but um amazing thing is she says even while she thought she had left uh there were times when she felt even god speaking to her she felt even an urge to pray and she she couldn't understand because for her she felt okay i have rebelled i'm a rebel so uh why is he talking to me why am i still having contact with god but um amazing thing was obviously all of those things is like they were building up to something and it wasn't just you know once when she just felt something when she heard something that just turned around she heart she says my heart was hardened and i didn't want to hear uh, about god even from especially from people she says i was waiting for god himself to come down and and speak to me and and, and while other people may say oh don't wait for that you know what i feel like god did come to speak to her because god cares and that's the amazing thing that i i, I just marvel at at the fact that you know last time we're talking about a fairy tale and this time around it's a real story and i'm gonna let you guys listen to just a small clip of of what she went through uh which is really really amazing in my opinion uh just just listen it's hard for me to explain it because I could say uh, I came to church for family now, no longer for God, until I was like blaming it all on God and feeling like God was good to other people. And of course, I'm trying to summarize it, but it's just, but I felt like God was, I blamed it on God, and that as I reviewed my life, there were things that happened to me, and God. I feel like he hasn't done anything to help me out and I could say in a nutshell the church and God had failed me in my view at that point how I felt when I left church and so I threw away the church I stopped everything and 
I didn't want to hear anything about going to church. I just wanted to stay at home and I was waiting for that day when God will come to my house because He knows where my house is. And so I just became stubborn and just, you could say I hardened my heart toward God. Yeah, that is, you could say that I, I hardened my heart towards God. And in that process, of course, the first thing I realized was that God wasn't, uh, I think part of it is us being guilty towards our sins think that God is guilty. I think God is actually like saying, you're guilty, you're guilty. And so I'm still feeling guilty and taking it out as if it's God who's making me feel that way. And when the presence of God will come, it will make me, it will be strange to me because I wonder why is God coming to me although I'm a rebel. But still that wasn't shaking me up until the day when I just felt I like going to hell. Like I did at that point like I did have the feeling of going to hell but at this point I had it was intense. Like I was so focused and so done. Like I was just ready to be thrown in hell. <laughs> I was just ready to be thrown in hell. And so I was sitting at a desk at, at my table, like at a desk and just done like I, the bible was there i was thinking it was just so hopeless and and then i looked down when i looked down i no longer saw myself like the same way i would see the table see everything i saw myself but this time i was very 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 dark like there was you could say there was wicked darkness inside of me i was evil i was so so dark and as you saw that when i looked up uh, I I saw God and the devil and the devil was actually at that point asking for my soul like he was demanding my soul like like he was asking God to release me so he can claim my soul and God kept on saying no like the devil was pleading every time like continuously and God kept on saying no no and his no was translated as breath back into my lungs that I'll breathe. And so I, would, I was actually breathing God's no towards the plea of the devil had in my soul. And that was, that was, ah, that, like it was my breath. I was inhaling God's no towards the devil destroying my life. And so, at that point, I realized that God is not bad as I thought he was. He is actually very, very good. Because there was nothing that could make God say no. I, he had every right to say yes. Because I was evil and on top of being evil, I was not sorry about it. I was actually angry with God about it. and. I hated God and was angry with God and so at that point he had he had all the reasons to say yes, take his soul, but he still said no and so I actually saw that he is actually full of love and that every breath I breathe is actually God's love. It's actually his love. So yeah. Alright. So you guys, um I'm sure you heard that. Isn't that mind blowing? Isn't that mind blowing, guys? Uh, I myself have to confess and say I've never seen a vision in which I can claim I saw God or the devil or anyone. Um, and I thought God loved me, but I realized, okay, so God actually has a formula for everyone, and He knows, He understands where you are, and He sympathizes, and He's saying, "I'm going to come for you." You know, there's this Psalm. I think it's in the Psalm somewhere where He says, "I will search for you in every land." Uh, yeah, that, that's God for you and he's not about to give up. He's not about to say, oh, I don't know where she is now. Uh, you know, he's not going to give up. And you know, when I listened to her story, I, I realized that to an extent, there was also this element of self-righteousness where you think, because I did this, I deserve this kind of treatment or because I have been serving so God should do this because I have done this or I have not done that God should but when you're 
speaking or when you're coming from the perspective of grace it's not about you and what you've done and your actions and what you've not done or how you've served God but it's all about him and what is it about him it's about the cross it's about the cross it's about the cross and it's always always about the cross so guys um I just want to encourage you God if God could do this for this lady if God could literally work on this lady until she came back until he went and he was able to carry her and until she realized that God is good he can do it for your relatives he can do it for your friends for you he loves you and for me like I said before I knew God loved me and well I don't know maybe I'm very easy to please <laughs> but um, I realized that God can actually do much much more than he's done for me for people he can go and show them visions he can go and do the most like he did for, 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 for Paul uh, the guy in the Bible who, who was converted through God himself actually coming to meet him while he was on the way to Damascus and he, if he could do that for Paul if he could do that for this lady he can do that for many more people and I'm sure he's doing more it's just that we don't know all these stories but um, I think God just made it so that I could hear the story and understand that actually God loves people God is willing to do the most God is going out of his way for his people so guys do not be discouraged and do not be deceived God loves people and God is not into abandoning people just because you've been rebellious or just because you said a few stupid words or whatever. He doesn't care. He's still saying, I love this one. This is my child. And he is good, guys. He is good. Whatever it is that may be going on in your life, whatever it is that you may have gone through, just remember, God is not the author of that pain. In fact, he wants to relieve you. He wants to love you. And all he needs is for you to consent to being carried like that lamb back home, like that sheep, and just say, God, it's okay, carry me home. And that's true repentance, guys. That's true repentance. So um, God loves people, and God is going all out for his people. Whatever it is that you hear from people, uh, uh, if it's not reinforcing the fact that God loves his people and he's doing the most to reach out to them and to get them back into his embrace, then it's a lie. Don't believe it. So guys, don't just remember, uh, you can share, subscribe, or whatever. Share with word of mouth uh, about God's love, about God's goodness in your life, in other people's lives. You know, it can encourage someone. It can bring back the light in someone's eyes. And yeah, God loves you. And he has a formula for you. If Even if you call yourself a hard nut, he's got a way to conquer you just wait and see so i'll see you guys next time uh enjoy the rest of i don't know until we meet again right